Francisco attacking Amsterdam. <laughs> I thought all we did in Amsterdam was sit in coffee shops and smoke. Like, well, what else is going on there? And, and look, at the, a couple times. And look at the amazing flowers that are man, there. Man, this is an flowers. aggressive podcast, isn't it? Wow. I know, man. We're going to get that explicit rating quick. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, interesting. And- Interesting. So, um, you know, Cisco had its uh, its live event in uh, Amsterdam. I guess it's their EMEA event in Amsterdam, but um, the live EMA in Amsterdam. But, you know, as usual, lots of good news. I think I think the market sometimes or not the market, but uh, customers sometimes forget kind of the depth and breadth of, of Cisco, like how big this company is and how much it actually does. Um, it's like, you know, the iceberg that the Titanic ran into. You see that, you see that iceberg above, but you don't see what's below the water and uh, Cisco is everywhere. Um, anyway, three things I pulled out of it and uh, I'm gonna try and do a little justice to Will on some of this. Um, I'm gonna lead though with uh, with uh, the Will's stuff. Will's not that, here, say whatever you want. That's right. Just make stuff up on networking if you want. <laughs> yeah, you like emergent behaviors. Exactly. He makes stuff up on networking all the time. Why can't we? I love it. <laughs> anyway, um, Edge. So new announcement, uh, new product announcement from Cisco. It's the uh, UCS X Direct. So it's a smaller version of their UCX compute platform designed for the edge and remote spaces. This is a this is a good one, right? So um, UCS is a very uh, powerful compute and networking platform. Everything converged into one one chassis, um, really cool platform, lots of computational power, lots of bandwidth. Um, and so, and as we all know, Cisco connects everything, right? The edge to the cloud, to the to the core data center. Um, so what they've done is they've built out these endpoint compute platforms for the edge um, that could sit in retail, could sit pretty much anywhere. With all that computational power you need to do say AI inferencing at the edge, and all of the connectivity and security that ties the edge back to um, the cloud and back to the core data center. Uh, they announced it at uh, EMEA. I think this is actually the second generation of that platform, um, but really good story. And I'm going to fly through these quickly so we can uh, have any kind of discussion you want it. That's part one. Part two, um, I was amazed at how much they talked up Nutanix at um, at, EM, at a live in Amsterdam, you know, they struck this partnership last week or last month or last year. I'm sorry. I went through all the iterations uh, last, whatever. Year. Yeah. last year. And, and usually the way these partnerships go are, you know, you have a lot of, you do a, you do a, P, a press release, a lot of fanfare, and then you don't hear about it ever again. Right. It kind of makes its way through the channel. Yeah. But um, Cisco has put a big emphasis on this partnership. And I think it has a lot to do with, end of lifing of hyperflex and really wanting to have that response um, in the HCI space because it does play into edge. It plays into uh, a market that they don't usually play in, which is the small enterprise and down, right? That down market customer base. Um, played a, put a big emphasis on it. I heard at one point, one of the uh, executives talk about how they treat Nutanix like it's one of their own products. And it really makes you wonder, like, how you know how deep is this relationship going to go in 2024? So really interesting there. Um, part three is AI. They had an announcement with uh, with NVIDIA, where they're going to deploy AI infrastructure. So it's UCS servers. Um, it's it's uh, it's Cisco networking, obviously with NVIDIA um, GPUs in the NVIDIA software stack that are. Uh, validated configurations uh, and reference architectures that can be easily deployed uh, at the customer site um, or on customer or uh, on the customer uh, premises or at the edge wherever, easily spun up and managed through Intersight, um, their cloud-based management platform, which I think is a really cool play, all Ethernet-based, um, very cool play for what Cisco is doing. I love how it got its AI. Uh, mentioned in there, but really did it in a relevant way um, that is going to find use. The, the other big thing is they're going to really push this heavily through the uh, Cisco channel, which is very broad. So um, three really kind of interesting things I saw the company doing. I'll be curious to see, um, see especially on the AI front, how that plays out over the next couple of quarters. 
Hey, Matt, what's the uh, current state of, of UCS? Who, who are they? Uh, who is Cisco uh, targeting and who, who's buying? Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, it's a, it has traditionally been a large enterprise customer and it has traditionally been an existing uh, Cisco customer, right? Um, I've invested all this money in, in networking gear from Cisco. Uh, it's a natural extension to uh, to uh, deploy their compute as well, especially when I can do it in such a converged way, right? Pull out blades where you know I have my networking and my compute. It's a great it's a great story. Uh, I what and it's funny because I've talked to folks and um, I think UCS in some ways is is maybe their best kept secret. Um, I used to talk about Intersight, but they're really kind of indexing there. But and I say that because. There is so much capability within UCS, and there's so much simplicity uh, in UCS from a kind of deploying a stack somewhere and just kind of plugging in it and away you go, um, that I don't think the company emphasizes a lot in its messaging because it's, it's, it, it is sold into Cisco customers traditionally, um, or I should say primarily. Uh, I think they have an opportunity to, to expand that SAM, if you will, the sellable market that they have. Yeah. Um, and I know they're investing quite a bit from a technology perspective into UCS. Uh, I think they just really need to tell that story more strongly. Interesting. Yeah, stuff. Matt, what's going on between uh, the uh, Cisco Networking Cloud and uh, Thousand Eyes? I'm sorry, did you say Will? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna feign complete ignorance. Uh, Pat might know this uh, and have an answer to this, uh, but I have not been tracking um, the integration between Thousand Eyes and security and Cisco Security Cloud. Um, do you know what's going on there, Pat? Yeah, I mean they're they're pulling together. So first of all, uh, Cisco started off as networking, uh, got into security, and then they added bit with and basically security uh, from a networking standpoint is a is a segment type of strategy but it, it got you an incredible amount of data which got them into uh, observability and they're making a, a a a play to buy splunk right now that's one of the biggest observability companies out there so and this is um cisco strategically taking adjacencies to networking uh which is security and now it's data and then coming up with hybrid multi-cloud fabrics that whether you're running a workload on AWS, on-prem, sovereign cloud, OCI, being able to leverage all those capabilities uh, across all those different uh, uh, areas. You know, and that, Pat, you you kind of hit on what I think is, and talk about the iceberg, right, and so much below the waterline with, with Cisco. That's that's what's so interesting about this company is they they... <laughs> They are literally um, the foundation for data, right? For data movement, for, I mean, across the board, there is so much opportunity with a company like them that, and they are, they're really starting to play into these adjacencies. And that's why I think like the Splunk acquisition, Intersight, and everyone focuses on Splunk for, um, for security and kind of what they can do from a security perspective. But from an observability, from a management perspective, from a data movement, uh, you name it, right? System health, um, environment health perspective, there is so much untapped potential that they have um, sitting at their fingertips. It's going to be really fun. That's a company over the next couple of years to really watch Cisco and see kind of how they leverage all of this, all of this goodness they have and all the depth they have. 